Today on Tom's Tinkering and Adventures, Honda Service B123. This is pretty much the worst video ever made. Napoleon, like anyone can even know that. Hello my friends, and welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. Today we're gonna do the uh, service the B123 service on uh, the uh, 2016 Honda CRV that we own here. And uh, B123 is going to be pretty much the same thing on most Hondas that have the maintenance minder. So let me show you what uh, B123 means before we get started. Okay, if you have an A code, it means just to change the engine oil. And if you have a B code, it means to change the engine oil and the filter. And then one. Tires rotated, pressure checked, and uh, inspect everything. Two, air cleaner element needs to be replaced. Check the drive belt and replace the dust and pollen filter. That's your cabin filter. And three is replace the transmission fluid and transfer fluid if you have it. So if you have an all-wheel drive vehicle, you may have transfer fluid. The CRV does not have a transfer case. Uh, we had a Honda Pilot that did. Number four would be replace spark plugs, timing belt, inspect water pump and valve clearance. That's the big one, probably 100,000 miles. Uh, five, replace the engine coolant, and six, replace rear differential fluid if equipped. I think I did a B126 video a while back. So, oil change, uh, tire rotation. Actually, I just had tires replaced on this car, um, but I will probably rotate them myself. Um, I just like to check everything out. That way I can inspect the brakes. Air filter, air cleaner filter, and the pollen filter will show that. And the big one is going to be the transmission fluid, which this has a CVT. So um, I'm going to get started. I'm not going to show the uh, oil change. There's probably a million oil change videos. But I will show the air filter, the pollen filter, and the transmission fluid um, CVT. Oil change is complete. I know I said I wasn't going to cover it, but I'll just really quickly show you how very easy this vehicle is to do an oil change on. The oil filter is right there. And it even says, I flip you upside down here, engine oil. And has an arrow right there, 17 millimeter. You don't really even have to jack this car up. Um, I've driven it up on like two by fours or four by fours. That's all you really need to do an oil change. It's very easy. Four and a half quarts of oil. It says right here what kind to use, zero W20. So get whatever your favorite kind is and your favorite kind of filter. Speaking of that, we have a replacement air filter. Let me go to the front of the vehicle to show you where we're looking at. Here's the front of the vehicle, driver's side. One. Two. and hopefully you can see in there three doing this with one hand while I'm holding the camera and shooting a video so there we go. that's the old one looks like it was about time that's the new one we'll put it in there just line everything back up and then pop these clips. I'll get it lined up because it might take me two hands to do it and I'll show you how to close that lid. Yeah, get it back in there. One, two, this one over here is the hardest one. It's a little bit more effort because there's not a lot of room in there. Three. That's it. I don't know how much the dealer will charge you to change that out, but I know they aren't going to do it for free. So if you want to do this uh, B123 uh, service and you're afraid of maybe doing the transmission, which I'm telling you it's not hard, you can do the filters yourself and take it in for the, for the CVT flush, but I'm going to show you how to do that. Our next step is the cabin air filter, which is on the passenger side, inside, underneath the glove box. So open your glove box, 
you got to uh, pop this little piece off here, right there. It just pushes right off. So it's got a little hook. And then you gotta push the side of the glove box in on each side. Excuse me there. Let me see if I can set the camera up so we can see what I'm doing. Wait, I need a camera person. Okay, so push the sides in and down it goes. And then we're gonna go in here. Right here. So on this one, you just squeeze the tabs. I'll show you when we pull it out. Right there. Squeeze the tabs, it even has little arrows. And there's our cabin air filter. We'll pull that out. Place it with a new one. That's the number of the one I removed there, CF10134, which is, I don't know what the kind that is, a Fram, because I have an STP one, which is a different number. Hopefully it's correct. Installation is reverse of removal. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see that on there. Can I zoom in? Airflow with an arrow pointing down. So make sure you install your filter the same way, airflow. And it looks like it goes in this way. I had it sideways. There we go. Some of them may go in only one way. Some of them may go in multiple ways. Pop the cover back on. Listen for the click. Push the pushes right back in we install our little shock absorber thing here just gonna take two hands it looks like and job complete all right on to the very last big portion of the b123 service don't forget to do tire rotation Good time to inspect your brakes and stuff. But anyway, we are going to do the CVT drain. Now I have printed out some of the Honda manual here. You can find this stuff online. I know everyone always asks me, where do you get this? Do a little bit of research. If you need to purchase a manual, it's a very good, uh, very good investment. Purchase one, 40, 50, 60 bucks even. You're gonna save it by doing one of these jobs. So first thing you got to do is warm the vehicle up. So it's been running. This one says let the radiator fan come on twice. That's a normal operating temperature. Remove the drain plug. Right here, we're looking at the center of the vehicle. I'm off to my right, which is the left of the vehicle from the back, but the driver's side. Get you underneath here. Right there. That is our drain plug. Very easy. Barely even have to add this thing on jacks, but we do anyway. And it fits a standard 3 8 inch drive. Okay, I'm gonna need both hands, so let me set this down and we'll get that broke loose. I don't know what's gonna happen with this. I'm gonna move the drain pan a little bit in case it goes flying out. Or I can just hold that in there like that. Now, according to my information, we should have 4.2 quarts for a four-wheel drive model, all-wheel drive model. There we go, we'll just let it do that. I think it says that in here somewhere. Let's see. This one says 3.5 liters, 3.7 quarts, but that's for the to all wheel our front wheel drive the all wheel drive says 4.2 somewhere in here it says it anyway but we're draining it right now so we'll come back to fill and check while your fluid is draining you don't want to take a look at the uh drain plug here this is a magnetic drain plug let's see if i can hold this in the my foot there we go you go so you want to clean that off it's not uncommon 
what this thing is supposed to do. Now, if you see like a big giant piece of metal on there, then you should be really concerned. But I am not concerned about this at all. Clean it off. These are a good idea to replace them. I have a whole slew of those, so easy day. Oil is still draining. Once everything's done draining and you've cleaned that plug off, right there's your torque specs. 36 pound feet. There you go, it says to replace that crush washer. That's pretty tight, so make sure you get it good. Next, we're going to go to filling this thing up. Open the engine. Right here, there's the battery. There's your dipstick to check your oil. And right down there is where you fill this thing. That's not where you check it, but that's where you fill it. So you remove that. And all that is is just a rubber plug. Now, it's way down in there. I'm gonna see if I can get in there with just a uh, funnel. I got um, one quart containers of this fluid. Make sure you get the correct fluid. Uh, let me make sure I don't say the wrong thing for you here. Honda HCF2 continuously variable transmission fluid. So get the Honda stuff or Whatever compatible, I'm not going to tell you which one to do or which one's good or bad, but make sure it at least meets these specifications. And there you go, three and a half liters, it says at change. And I think I have another paper around here. I will see and make sure that I'm telling you correct, but I thought I had read 4.2 for this, but I'm going to put about three and a half in it. 4.5 quarts. All wheel drive so that's what it says I put four quarts in so now we're gonna go on to the check portion here so transmission fluid level check so start the car apply the parking brake start apply the parking brake start the car move it through all positions while pressing the brake pedal firmly Wait at least three seconds for each position. Move it back into park, turn the engine off. Remove the check bolt and the sealing washer. Check the transmission fluid level. So it's just a bolt and you're gonna take it out and we're gonna see if fluid drips out of here. Here's a picture showing where it's at and here I am going to show you where it's at. We're back under the car. There is our drain bolt and right above it. So looking at it like this, look up. There is our check bolt right there. So I'm gonna remove that right now just so we know that it comes out. It looks like it's a 12 millimeter. I'll let you know if that's any different. We'll take that out and then I'll put it lightly back in and we're gonna start the car. Okay, we just uh, ran the car through our paces there. Shifted through all the gears. I'm gonna get underneath here. Take this thing off. And we'll see. Okay, we had a little tiny bit come out, but we should have like a gentle drip of it coming out of there and that would make sense since i only put four quarts in so i'm gonna add a little bit more and we'll do the same thing until you get like a little steady drip of it out actually i'll probably just put half a quart in added the additional half of a quart and let's see what happens here okay we got a little tiny bit of drip out of there I'm probably going to add a little tiny bit more. And make sure your vehicle is uh, level front to back too when you're doing this because otherwise I can throw it off. But I'm going to add a little tiny bit more and we'll see what happens because I might have put 4.4 quarts in or something. Yeah, I'm 
go. Try number whatever this is, three. All right, well, we're probably pretty darn close. Add a little tiny bit more and we're gonna call her good. All right, I've got it where I wanted. It took about 4.75 quarts for me to be happy with it, but four and a half is a good start. And then there you go. This also says to replace that crush washer, so get yourself an assortment of those. And then 15 foot-pounds is what the specified torque for that check bolt is. Okay, and then make sure you've checked your oil Check your cap, check that cap. I really don't like that thing. It's kind of weird, it's just like a cork. Remember that we have torqued everything. If you had your new um, crush washers, you replaced those. And uh, now we're done with all the fluids and filters and stuff. So if you're gonna do a wheel rotation, go ahead and get that done now. Pretty easy job. This is all the tools that we use right here. Three eighths inch socket with an extension, 12 millimeter, 17 millimeter, drain pan, funnel, and uh, some papers out of the manual. And uh, if you're watching the video or whatever, you probably don't need those. So pretty easy. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and we'll show you the maintenance minder too, since uh, I've covered that in other videos, but that's the final part of this. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can scroll through on that screen, I believe, but I'm gonna show you how to do it right here. So when you're due for a service, it'll automatically come up on this as soon as you turn it on, but I just showed you we can cycle through. We're gonna hold this button in for about 10 seconds here. Let's see, 1,001, 2, 3, 4, 5, six seven and i started a little late and it's flashing and then once it's flashing then we're going to press it and hold it again 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 there you go and now we've reset our maintenance minder so it's going to go into whatever the next cycle is which you only know when you know but it'll probably just be an oil change next time um I don't remember how many miles we're in this car, 40,000 or something like that. So we'll be coming up for a radiator and all those other good things soon. And this is just something I've learned from being an old man, learned from my dad, learned from being in the military and that sort of stuff. I have a little log for every vehicle I have. I put the date, the mileage, the service that I performed. I also up here write what kind of oil it is, how much it takes, the drain plug. That's the common uh, Fram filter but I've used all kinds of different filters, whatever you like to do. So anytime I do maintenance, I put it in my logbook. This was actually a really good selling uh, feature for my last car. It showed that I did all the maintenance, but uh, I'll write that in here. With the money I saved, I'm able to uh, enjoy a couple of cold beverages. Um, I don't know how much this service would cost at the Honda dealer, but we had to purchase uh, five quarts of oil, an oil filter, an air filter, a cabin air filter, five quarts of CVT fluid, and then uh, washers if you're going to replace all those. Like I said, I don't know how much they cost because I have a big assortment of them that probably I bought them cheaper than if you buy them individually. But um, I don't know how much a dealer would charge to do this, but I think I spent over $120, $150 just to purchase all the stuff to do it myself. So I would imagine it's well over double that. So we saved, let's say, a hundred to two, three hundred dollars today. That'll buy you a lot of beer, even if you're not buying fancy beer like this. You know, you can buy whatever kind of cheap stuff that you want. But there's also the satisfaction of doing it yourself, and also, you know, sometimes you drop the car off, and they have it all day. So if you're doing this on a Sunday or something. You can turn on the football game or whatever it is that you want to do. 
uh, turn it on in the background, listen to it. You drop the drain plug, you come and watch the football game. It goes to a commercial, you can go back and put the drain plug back in and pull the filter. And, you know, it's not going to be a fast oil change or whatever, but you're getting it done on your time. And you also get to see what happens with the vehicle because some of these uh, places you take stuff aren't exactly on the up and up. But there you go. All right, if you're enjoying my content, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.